All right, so I'm not exactly sure how I want to start this. I mean, I'm kind of uh, starting it by saying I'm not exactly sure how I want to start this. But uh, so kind of the idea of this show is to uh, talk about movies, video games, TV shows, music, books, whatever uh, our interests are. Uh, Today is kind of more of a glorified excuse to hang out with my friends, which are Gabe and Corinne. Uh, so how about you two introduce yourselves, Gabe and Corinne? Gabe, you get to go first because your mm. name was said first. <laughs> no, no take in. Hi, I, I'm Gabe Halverson. I am in the great state of Iowa, which is the only time I'll probably say great next to the word Iowa ever again. Um, <laughs> I've known Riley, God, I don't even know, fifth grade? A long time. Third grade. Third grade, was it? It's been a long yeah. time. Um, aside from that, I play a lot of video games, but I think music is probably my focus on things. How about you, Corinne? Uh, I'm Corinne McCrory. I've known uh, Riley since um, we met at Target. Uh, I don't know how long ago that was. Uh, At least five years? Um, Yeah, I'd say about five years. 2017? Yeah, probably 2017, something like that. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe a little earlier. I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, I, um, enjoy video games. I enjoy tabletop RPGs, uh, books, movies. I'm kind of a a catch-all. I have very weird interests and, um, it, it's kind of going to be a toss up what I'm talking about every week. I would say, uh, we'll see. (laughs) That's fair. That's entirely fair. Uh, so I'm Riley Constantine. Uh, you know me from my YouTube channel which this video is going to be on. So I don't I don't really think I need to do introductions, but hi. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll just jump right in. Uh, Corinne, have you uh, played or watched or listened to anything recently that catches your interest? Uh, yes. Um, I've, um, there's been a couple things on my radar. Um, there's a new game, uh, Demonologist, that's a lot like Phasmophobia. That I think I might like more than Phasmophobia. So that's kind of one thing. Um, And then uh, I started watching Ted Lasso, which I know I'm behind the curve, but it's really good. I don't like sports, but I like Ted Lasso. Um, And then finally, I've been doing a lot of reading um, because I started my own podcast, which I'll probably plug later if that's okay. Um, That's That's just fine. Yeah, uh, but, uh, and uh, most recently I read uh, Alex DeCampi's uh, Heartbreak Incorporated, which is an excellent book. Um, I recommend it. What's it about? Um, Well, it is a mystery. It is, it has some elements of the supernatural and the occult. It's also a romance, um, but handled in a really fun way. Um, it's about a, uh, like an investigative journalist who she, um, is out of work, uh, does not work as an investigative journalist because print media is dying. Um, and basically so is web news. Like it's not really, it's really hard to get a job in that. And so she starts, yeah, exactly. And so she starts temping at a, um, an agency called Heartbreak Incorporated, um, that is about breaking up people's relationships Uh, The reason they do it is because generally like those people are one of those people. It wants to get a divorce and needs a reason. So it can be like the other person's fault. And it's all like really rich people. So like it's basically Hmm. like fuck the rich, the book. Um, (laughs) Okay. Yeah. I'm 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 intrigued. Yeah. Um, And uh, since it is a romance, the main character starts to fall for her boss, who is like this like kind of mysterious like just like incredibly hot person who is um kind of does a lot of the breaking up of relationships through seduction and things like that um basically like making people cheat on their spouses which more morally dubious but usually done for the right reasons um (laughs) or they're both terrible people and it doesn't matter um (laughs) and then uh the occult gets brought in there and it's a wild ride um it's it's really fun um it's has a lot of tension it's very tense and you get um 
you start the first half of the book, there's really nothing supernatural or supernatural at all going on, unless like you're keeping your eyes like you're like, this seems weird. That's <laughs> a little strange. So like there's little like crumbs throughout the story. And then you get to like midway and suddenly it's like, oh shit, <laughs> this is what's going on. All right. Now we need to stop insert blank from happening. Um, and it's, it's really good. I enjoy it. <laughs> sounds That sounds great. Yeah, that, yeah. Sounds, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a very fun book. The writer, Alex DeCampi, is very witty. Um, like, there's multiple points where you'll read a line and you'll be like, yeah. Or, like, you'll read a line and you'll just, like, start giggling to yourself or chuckling, you know. Um, she's just a great writer. And a lot of it is, man, capitalism sucks. <laughs> book. <laughs> What's the name of it one more time? Uh, Heartbreak Incorporated. Heartbreak Incorporated. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, name the name whatever we talk about in the description and then set, yeah, I, set up some links uh you know once i post this so reminding but, myself yeah. yes uh but i'm always okay with fuck capitalism the book yeah yeah that's, that's very much good. what it is there's like so many i i was taking notes because i was reading it for my podcast and uh there's so many parts where i'm just like fuck capitalism <laughs> fuck capitalism and then like eat the rich <laughs> that's a lot of my notes on this book <laughs> and it's very much written from the point of view of yeah fuck that <laughs> this sucks why is the world this way <laughs> yep yep yep, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> all right so i'm gonna switch it over to gabe have you watched listened played or uh read anything as of recent yeah, so uh, I guess the first thing I we watched Quasi, which is a movie from the Super Troopers people on 420, because uh, it was 420, and that's what you do. <laughs> and, yeah, that's fair. That is that we is what you do. And watch Super Troopers, of course, all these things. And I, I found out about a show they made, which I didn't even know they made a TV show called Tacoma FC, which is on Hulu or on HBO Max, and it's. Mm -hmm about a fire station full of idiots that do things that fire station employees shouldn't do. And, <laughs> and they have the hot girl on the show and they never reference it ever. She's just like there. And it's <laughs> one of the best running jokes. It's just like the hot girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's there. <laughs> she's there. But yeah, Tacoma FC is pretty fun. If you like Super Troopers, it's the same thing, but firefighters. That I'm okay. sounds really fun. I'm okay with this. Uh, so... I guess for me, uh, recent things I've watched were uh, John Wick Chapter 4, mm. uh, Dungeons & Dragons, and I saw the Mario movie last week. I've made uh, to see both Dungeons & Dragons and the Mario movie. I haven't seen either yet. Uh, Dungeons & Dragons, pretty great. Uh, it, it's a very silly little fantasy movie, and it's very damn proud of it. Uh, and, you know, it kind of feels like and I, my tabletop uh, RPG experience is admittedly limited, but I feel like, like the plot and like, it feels like creatively, like it would be a D and D campaign, mm. uh, just cause it's so silly and like how the characters talk, like, like, you know, why can't you just use magic? Magic doesn't work like this. It's, <laughs> this is the real world. And, you know, <laughs> You know, and think, silly things like that. It's just a very fun, silly fantasy movie with a lot of heart. Uh, on the other hand, Mario movie, it's it's fine. It's definitely <laughs> it's definitely geared towards kids and is kind of the safest version of what a decent Mario movie geared towards kids could be. And that's fine, but it's not necessarily like, uh, you know, we kind of with a lot of. Uh, animated movies we kind of expect like there to be some sort of depth like that appeals to adults like you know like a lot of pixar movies uh other types of movies what yeah like uh encanto coco like they were all like really great movies just on their own merit like moana fantastic yeah yeah, yeah. keep your uh, uh keep it a little bit lower expectations co because it's done by illumination studio so think yeah <laughs> yeah I, th minions. I found that i found the toads kind of annoying they kind of reminded me of the minions too much mm -hmm. <laughs> uh i mean they're not as bad because they're, no, no. they're not they're not in the movie as often and they're also voiced by uh uh by key so oh, yeah. I, at least I think it's key 
think it's Keegan Michael Key. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you know, you know, that's I mean, it's it's a fine movie. Uh, it the first half is not that good, but the third act kind of picks up some of the slack and, and has some fun with it. Um, as far as video games, though. Hmm. Uh, I have recently been pl- started Di- Dead Island 2, the game oh. that that yeah. uh, that we thought would never come out. Right. Um, and that's been solid. Good. I mean, as far as murdering zombies in On an island, it's oh. very it's very violent. If you wanna <laughs> if you wanna murder zombies in L.A., uh, you know you might have some fun there. Um, I'm still kind of early in it. Did you play the last one, or is this your first? This is my first rodeo with, okay. with, the, with the Dead Island. The The only prior experience I had with Dead Island was that really great uh, viral trailer they made that made the game seem super, like, from the first game, that made the mm-hmm. game super, super serious and had, like, the really sad song. Uh, yeah. Yeah, strong. it's... Uh, and it, and that game is definitely, from what I understand, is not that. No, no, no. Uh, Dead Island, I feel like it really struggled um, with its story because if you're playing alone, like it's it has a good start, it has a good beginning. Like you, you get into it, you go, you're like, I'm on an island full of zombies. That's not great. Let's figure out what to do. Um, but like you get about mid game and you there's really no plot. If I remember correctly, I remember just wandering around like, what the fuck am I supposed to be doing? And eventually I just stopped playing. Cause I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I just, I just, I just keep killing zombies, but there's no plot. That's it. Yeah. That's what experience I had. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Dead Island two. Uh, the story is still the weakest point. Mm hmm. Uh, so like far, run around, jump kind of parkour zombie game, if I remember correctly. Uh, that was uh, was was that Dying Light? Dying Light was more. Or, yeah. 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 This one's definitely about the chopping hack and slash. Hi, hack and slash. It's, it feels like Oblivion, but with zombies. Or, <laughs> or I guess the more accurate, the more pop culturally relevant term would be Skyrim, but with <laughs> uh, you know, you just decapitate them yeah. and kill them in excitingly gruesome ways. Does it um, feel like a 2023 game? Because I've heard the complaint about it is it feels still like the first one. I mean, I haven't played the first one. It, it definitely feels not necessarily modern. Um, mm. And honestly, I mean, I'm still just a few hours into the game, so I'll see. A part of me is worried that I might get tired of it due to it being yet another open world zombie game. Yeah, because uh, there's there's a lot of those, and there's just a lot of open world games. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of times, uh, uh, you know, I think a game would be better served if it was smaller scale and more linear. But yeah, that's just me. No, I agree. And also <laughs> yeah. because I don't, uh, and also because it's just there's just not enough time to play everything. Oh, um, if you're looking for a smaller scale game, it's still in. Um... Uh, beta, um, but I bought it and I really liked it. And it's a zombie game. Um, let me see. It should be in my fairly recently played. It hasn't been that long since I played it. Uh, darn, too long. Um, oh, uh, it's called Undying. Okay. Um, you can find it on Steam. It's currently in, you know, like it's a uh, still updating game Mm -hmm. um it's not like a completed story yet but the premise is really great so you're playing as um a mother and a son um mainly the mother um who it's like the beginning of the zombie apocalypse and uh she's been bitten um like during a uh there was like an evacuation that was supposed to be happening and she gets bitten um because the camp gets overrun but she and her son get left behind And so she um, needs to take care of her son until they can get to a new evacuation point. All the while, she is slowly getting weaker and be like zombifying. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, it is more about like, in theory, you could do everything yourself and it's faster than teaching your son. But if you don't teach your son how to survive, once you get weaker, 
you're fucked because you need to be able, like your son needs to be able to do stuff. Cause there's going to be a point where you reach the tipping point where you're less effective than your son. Um, and the whole point is to try and get to the evacuation point. And there's like various, like first we go here because there's supposed to be news about the evacuation point. And then we go here because like um, somebody said that they moved it to Harbor and then, you know, like it, it isn't completed yet. So I don't know what the end goal is but like it has a linear plot and like it has a progression that's going on and the Mm -hmm. choices you make really do affect the game because how much you teach your son affects how much he can be useful to you and keep himself alive once you start getting too weak to um do Mm -hmm. things and it's it's really well done it's really um I really enjoyed it. Uh, I probably won't play it again until it uh, like adds more story because I got to the end of the story that they had so far. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's Undying and it's by, let me see the studio. Uh, it's by the developer Vanimals and the publisher Skystone Games and Vanimals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but if you're looking for a zombie game that's like, it has a, a story and like a, a point, I guess. I like it when zombie games mean stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, there's a point, and there's also, like, a, there's a lot of, like, kind of backstory on the family, like, you, you learn about, you know, the characters over time, and, like, where the dad is, and, like, it's, it's really, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I played it obsessively up until I beat, like, the story portion that was done so far, so. I, it reminds me, I actually have played a couple of things I completely forgot. <laughs> Either okay. Before- a mod for Halo called Cursed Halo. Uh, I have not heard of that. I have not heard of this, no. Okay, so um, one of my friends told me, Nate, you you know Nate, he of pulled course. up our Halo lobby and told us to install Cursed Halo, which, so Cursed Halo is some mod made by a player that is probably the most demented thing I've ever seen a player create. <laughs> it's, the grenades are Dungeons and Dragons dice. <laughs> so every time you throw a grenade, you get a 1 or 20 result that could be anything from summoning the flood to banshees that come in that flap their wings like they fly like birds. <laughs> my my favorite one that I've seen is a black hole come in. Oh, no. Comes in a black hole and just kills everything. <laughs> so, you, so you're playing the game and you can pick up things like one of the things they made is mini warthogs that you throw as grenades and then turn into big warthogs and run things over. <laughs> it's... I don't know how to describe it other than that it's cursed Halo. It's everything is randomized. You don't expect what's going to happen next to make any sense, but you're going to laugh about it. Oh, that's funny. And, and that's kind of the appeal of Halo to me. Yeah. Like this yeah. part where they drop the warthog on the beach and you have to drive it. They turn that into a stretch limo warthog. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I imagine that's hard to shoot out of. It, it's hard to do anything out of. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm I'm gonna guess. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a really mu- like a very small map where it would be like hell to drive that <laughs> kind of vehicle. <laughs> we broke the game on several occasions because of this. <laughs> like you well, can throw warthogs inside of spaceships, and then the warthog is in the ship, so you're driving it through the <laughs> things where you're not supposed to have vehicles, but you have a warthog, and it gets stuck in the wall. <laughs> it's just fun to break the game like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's pretty great. So it's it's free too, which is even better. Oh, that is even better. If you have Master Chief Collection, you can install that. I'll so have to have tell all. Bevan because I'm pretty sure he has that. There is one thing. I don't know if you want. Uh, we'll say spoiler alert if you don't want it ruined. Spoiler alert. Stop listening. But they have installed Halo Kart as a level. <laughs> a Mario Kart with characters from Halo, and for some reason Goku and Sephiroth are in it too. Oh, I love <laughs> I that. That's- but, Brilliant. That's yep. joyous. So we did that. And we had to That's shoot. why we're still on this earth. Um, <laughs> yes. Yep. This, gives, this gives me hope. Yep. <laughs> it was great. Oh. Um, so a little campaign with those missions randomly in the middle of it. <laughs> it just adds more to the story, obviously. All of its canon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Cursed Halo. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh. I was going to say, uh, you know, pivot to... No, actually, you know, you go ahead, Curran. I'll wait till... till. Okay, I was just going to say, speaking of modded um, games, uh, something else I've been playing is uh, Conan. Um, I have uh, some friends who started a uh, SIPTA server. Uh, SIPTA is the new expansion where there's, like, islands and stuff. 
um, and it's modded to hell and back. Like it is, like you can pick D and D classes, and you can be like an elf or <laughs> like um, various things. Like it, it's really fun. Um, we have like ridiculous houses, um, and you know, mainly we just run around and have adventures. But um, one of the things that was uh really funny is um since it's modded to hell and back um somebody made uh one of my friends made the zaddy zone in 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 our house and in the zaddy zone is pictures of pedro pascal like just like yep. screenshots of course um and like memes of pedro like all over a room like floor walls like <laughs> ceiling everything it's just pedro and then there's a character they've made to look like pedro who just like dances in the room. <laughs> so that's the Zaddy Zone. And we uh, have dance parties in there. And I just thought if we're talking about things that have been modded to hell, uh, Conan, where it turns into a dance party is. Um, yep. Yeah, that's relevant. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty great. Say hi to Bevan for me. Riley says hi. I was trying to be sneaky. <laughs> I got a cat butt. Oh, we got cats and dogs. Uh, so I was going to pivot because uh, uh, we haven't really talked about music yet. Mm. Uh, Gabe, have mm. you listened to the new Metallica album? I have. I have. And what are your thoughts on it? I think it's actually fairly solid. Uh, the one thing I have against it is that all of the guitar solos sound exactly the same. That's a fair point. I actually think I'm actually kind of less on it than that. I actively don't really like it just because a lot of the songs, not just the guitar solos, but there are a lot of the riffs feel repeated. They do. Uh, like it, like it's, it's definitely an album that's good in small doses, but that's kind of a problem when that album is an hour and 17 minutes long. Oh, too God. long. It's too long. Again, they it, always do this. Yes. Uh, that's you know, really long. <laughs> that's a very long album. And that's, and it's, stop doing that. And it's, it's bizarre because it's like, uh, you know, like, I've listened to a few fairly long albums this year. Like uh, one of my favorite albums this year is the new Periphery record. And that one's about an hour and 10 minutes long. But yeah. I always felt like I wanted to come back to it because it was so, like it was so varied. It was so uh, creative in its song structures and its uh, vocals. And, you know, I just want to go back to it. But like with Metallica, it's like I listened to it a couple times and I'm kind of like, I, I just don't feel the the desire to go back to it. And it's kind of, yeah. it's also kind of bizarre too, because another band, another thrash band released a, a thrash metal record that, that day, uh, which was uh, Overkill. And I thought the Overkill album was actually better. I listened to it too. It's better. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's not necessarily like a, an album of the year contender, but like if you want to listen to a good thrash records, uh, it's called Scorched. It's, you know, it's a lot more creative in its riffs and, you know, just, yeah. And it's, and it's shorter. It's, 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 it's still, it's still lengthy at 50 minutes, but, or 50 some minutes, but it's definitely a just more interesting record that, you know, you can go back. There's reasons you want to go back to it. I think the Metallica thing is they've become a little bit like Weezer, which is a weird comparison to make, but they always have one banger that I'm really excited about, and then the rest is just kind of eh. Yeah, uh, that that reference kind of goes, I, I get the Weezer, I get Weezer, I get the, well, I kind of do get the Weezer reference. I get I, the I Weezer hear, reference. I hear, I hear, <laughs> I, hear I, I hear other people talk, that's kind of the way I hear other people talk about Weezer. I haven't listened to Weezer in years. Yeah. It's the thing where they have a good lead single and the album is very boring. Okay. I have to say, the thing that I hate the most is a boring album. Um, if, like, I don't care if it's necessarily, if it's, obviously I care if it's good or bad, but like, if it is middling and boring, it's like, it that's somehow even worse than being bad. Because if it's bad, at least they were probably trying something and it didn't work. If it's middling and boring, then it's like, you were just phoning it in or like, you just had no inspiration and you did it anyway, you know? Like, 
I'd rather a big swing, yeah. Yeah, I'd rather a big swing and a miss than a... Eh. What if it's bad because it's boring? Like the new well, Godsmack wreck. <laughs> that <laughs> is the absolute worst when it's bad because it's boring. Well, uh, you know that this is something you should never have listened to. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I listen to it because, you know, I, I like pain and suffering. And... <laughs> You know, sometimes you just gotta you just gotta experience something that's terrible to remind you how good other things can be. <laughs> uh, it's it's the full spectrum of the human human experience. <laughs> yes, you watched it. You listened to it for the same reason I watched the Death Note movie. Like, no, I'm <laughs> going to be mad, but let's do it anyway. I want to feel something, even if that is anger. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Which is probably a, that's probably a new metal lyric. I could I would I could hear Lincoln Park kind of maybe making that one into a song. Uh, so, uh, Corinne, have you listened to Metallica? Not necessarily the new album, but any Metallica. I have listened to Metallica in general. I have not listened okay. to the new album. Um, okay. I had a friend who was really big into Metallica when I was younger, so I I heard it in its heyday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, peak days. It, it's yeah. always it's always weird to talk about Metallica because I like I feel like I always like a lot of people, a lot of metalheads always trash on them. But their early stuff is still so good. Yeah, yeah, they did. They were like even as somebody I'm not really into metal generally speaking, like I can appreciate metal. Um and there's sometimes I can enjoy metal, but like it's not one of my go-to genres. Um, Understandable. But, yeah, like, it's just not super my thing. I'm really more into the, I mean, currently I'm into, like, sad lesbian music, but, like, <laughs> that's I just mean, currently. That's what I would like find that for, for us, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so sad lesbian music <laughs> is um, sad lesbians or the vibe of sad lesbians. The person may not be a lesbian. I don't know for sure. Uh, generally um, singing about... Uh, being sad um in various ways um or angry there's also angry lesbian music which i also really enjoy right now I, i'm uh, asking the same thing so i'm curious are we talking like phoebe bridgers uh yeah yeah like a phoebe yeah, bridgers yep. um uh things kind of in that vein it has kind of been what i've been listening to lately um boy genius absolutely yes yeah 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 we're um kind of that vein is where i've been lately um but I have listened to metal and um, I used to listen to Metallica back in the day. And I remember some of it being pretty good. Like I enjoyed it, which is saying something. Cause I don't really like, like I'm not super into metal. So that's okay. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Currently it's sad run. lesbians. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Riley boy genius. I think you might actually like, I really liked that. Right? I think you would like boy genius. Okay. Oh, uh, I'll get a notate. That would, I'll, I'll, that's another one I'll add to the description. I, that was when you said sad lesbian music. I was like, I think I know what she's saying. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You 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 got it in one. Phoebe, Phoebe Bridgers, uh, Boy Genius. Um, there's also like kind of like happy lesbian music, which is like Rat Wife, and you know, like there's there's a whole. I've just been listening to a lot of lesbians. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. It's, ne it's never a bad thing. No, it's never a bad thing. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, trying to think of any other music I've listened to lately that is not Godsmack or Metallica. Or uh, I have. Ooh, sorry, my my brain is currently loading. It's it's in the it's in the buffer, the circular. Well, I mean, it is kind of early. Like, it's yeah, I'm still, I'm like... still having this coffee that's like this half the size of my head. Yeah, I, I had a cup of tea. I'll probably have another cup of tea. I have an idea for a segment if you want while we load. Yes. Okay. Please. Oh, that's a metal. That's a good metallic, unintentional Metallica reference. While we while we load. <laughs> so this is inspired by uh, something that may or may not have been posted in our Facebook group. Um, but I'm going to call this segment "Band Fights." Yes. So oh. the idea is, I'm going to read a description. And you have to guess what band this is. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm, I'm game for this. All right. So when you log like Jeopardy to buzz in, I want to hear vowel noises, some 90s vowels. And that's to check in to answer the question. Okay. So this is band fights. First one. Let's start 
a little easier and work our way to more difficult. So the first one, pair of brothers, one stab the other with a butcher knife in a drunken argument. Riley. That is Slipknot. That is Slipknot. That is correct. (laughs) (laughs) Those vile vowel noises were wonderful. Yep, that was on point. I was <laughs> bored with one. You remember that story, Riley? The I line. I do. Yeah, I, I it was one of my it's one of my all time favorite uh, article headlines is Slipknot guitarist stabs brother in knife fight or stabbed in knife fight yep. and Tuesday morning or some morning night knife fight and I'm like, this is metal as fuck. <laughs> I God was man. like, this this is something that I vaguely remembered. I was like, what? I've heard of this, but I, uh, the, the only thing I was thinking of is people, uh, and knives and metal was, um, the, the, uh, the, I think it was the Swedish, the Nordic, the Nordic metal, um, it, issue. <laughs> yeah. I heard. There's a whole thing there. For sure. There's yeah, a whole thing uh... there. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think you're talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that's a little bit different. A little, yeah. bit, a, a little bit different. The the cult murders. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little different. And I was like, no, I don't think that's right. <laughs> All right. Question two: Had a backstage fight in Paris where one brother broke a tambourine over the other one's head. Oh, um. If you need a hint? I've got one too. This is on the tip of my tongue because I feel like I know this. Um, can can we get a hint? Yes. Think 90s Brit pop. Um, oh, I know this one. I remember this one. Um, I can't think of their goddamn name. Uh, what one is it? One brother called the other brother a fucking baked potato on Twitter, if that helps. <laughs> Um, this, uh, it, oh, I know this, I can't, I said maybe, gotta be the one that says me, uh, I don't know anything, I can't think of that band name, you want the answer, it is Oasis, Oasis, this entire segment apparently could have been filled up with just Oasis stories, I was, my brain kept saying ocean, and I'm like, that's wrong. It is not called ocean. <laughs> that is a band, though. That is a band, but it's not ocean. But I was, I was, it was like, I knew this story. Oh. The baked wish- potato is probably my favorite insult that I've ever heard. <laughs> Use a fucking baked potato. No context, just that. <laughs> Uh, I I do like that calling someone a baked potato. I really like calling people inanimate objects like oh, as yeah, an insult, great. or like like calling them like a pigeon or something. Because I don't know, I feel like it just evokes a lot more than uh, just a standard insults. Like it's standard weird. curse words. Yeah, yeah, it evokes evokes a feeling. Um. Hmm. Question three. There's five of these total. Singer called up drummer in the middle of the night saying, where's my fucking drummer? The drummer puts on a suit, shows up at the door, and knocks the singer out in one punch. (laughs) Can we have a genre? (laughs) Classic rock. Ooh, um... We should say, can I buy, like, like if as if it were the Wheel of Fortune, can I buy a, can I buy a genre? (laughs) Yeah, we're testing this out, so let's see what... (laughs) Whatever tweaks you want to make for yeah. hints. I've got hints I can throw for this. Classic rock. Probably this... more classic than you're thinking. Okay. More classic than I'm thinking. Can, can we get a, uh, can we get a decade? Yes, this would be the 70s. Okay, um, I would like to buzz in. This is a completely random guess. Uh, wha- uh, um, <laughs> um, uh, sticks. Hmm, that's an interesting one. No. Okay, okay. Interesting guess. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Uh, it was a completely shot in the dark. Uh, just kind of seemed like something the drummer of sticks would do. <laughs> okay, hint two. Most parents' favorite rock band. Oh, I think I might have this one. 
the Rayful Dead. Ooh, no, good guess though. I, I know, I know very little about. Uh, Ooh, Rolling Stones. Bingo. <laughs> Rolling Stones. In the 1970s, Mick Jagger, drunkenly in the middle of the night, called up his drummer saying, where's my drummer? Charlie Watts famously put on a suit before showing up at his door and knocking him unconscious. <laughs> I mean, with fantastic. style. It's fantastic. No notes. <laughs> so this one, probably the easiest on here, but I love the story, so it has to be included in band fights. Fight on stage after Singer reportedly has had sex with a drummer's girlfriend and recorded it to be used on an album. It is still there. Oh, um, uh, this is, um, what's the band this person is in? Um, <laughs> that's the problem I'm having. I know who did this. Uh, what is that band? I think you would know this one too, Riley. Yeah. Um, uh, Can you repeat the question? Fight on stage after the singer recorded having sex with the drummer's ex-girlfriend and recorded it on a track for their album. It is still there in the song. I Each actually one, don't. The song is Rocket Queen. This was the 80s, right? Mm-hmm. Late 80s. Uh -huh. Late eighties, um, because I okay. Can I um, can I insert a band member because I can't think of the band name. Okay, I'll allow for half a point. Yep. Okay. Uh, ah, um, Axl Rose. Correct. Axl <laughs> Rose is the man in question. Yes, yes. Axl Rose did this. He did. <laughs> I just don't remember what band he's in. Yeah, like, I. I had a feeling it was uh, Guns N' Roses, but I was like, I, I, haven't, I haven't listened to that. I actually have not listened to that much Guns N' Roses. Don't you on my book. So, so I'm kind of like, uh, that's, it's like, that sounds like something Axl Rose would do. Yeah. It's because he did. Yeah. <laughs> because he did. Uh, Come here, Chatter. If you're going to be a nuisance, you get to be on camera. It is pretty close. One to one and a half points. This one is oh. your one, so I'll end on the last one because it's harder. Kitty. Kitty and puppy. This one is great because it's famously an actual band breakup on stage. Like, they ended the band on stage. So, guitarist hit singer over the head with guitar before both storm off stage. Both returned to stage to have a fist fight for leaving again. One of them coming back to the stage saying, our band is done forever. This is the last show. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Man, imagine being in that crowd. Um, I'll give you the year because this is a tougher one. 2003 is when this happened. 2003. Did they ever get back together? They Okay, hint number one. They did this year. Ooh, who got together back together this year? This, um, let's see. Hint two. Think new metal. Oof. New metal. Um, uh, I'm, now I'm going through all of the new metal. It can't be Mudvayne. Can't be Slipknot. Can't be Disturbed. Can't be System of a Down, though. There is so much baggage there. That's a whole, yeah. They could definitely be on this list. <laughs> um, it's not Corn because Corn have been around since they started. You're on the right train of thought, though. Just think a little B, B squad. B squad. I mean, not POD. No, good guess though. Uh, mm, so so much new metal. Yeah. Um, Give me a second hint. Yes, I would love a second hint. Band name starts with a C. C. Mm. New metal that starts with a C. Wait, it can't be Creed. No. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. I mean, I, I mean, it's not, it's not, it can't be Creed. I, I mean, they're technically not new metal. They're also but, still famously hate each other. Yeah. Do also, 
But we got some good out of it. We got Alter Bridge out of it. Oh, yeah, exactly. Mm. I, I just, I can't think of any new metal that starts with C. Famous I'm, hint three. The singer is another man in another band. His name is Dez. Oh. Uh, I, I know. Okay, I know. I know the band. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> Uh, oh, Cold right. Chamber. Cold Chamber is correct. Oh my God! I should have, I should have known this. Um, be I, okay. Um, I work in tangentially to the music industry, and uh, I knew Cold Chamber got back together because of things. I should have, <laughs> I should have known that. Uh, I I I work with one of the late like the label that they're on. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're on tour with Mudvayne. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that should be a good tour. Yeah, I I should have known that. Uh, I just I haven't thought of Cold Chamber beyond my work in <laughs> nobody has. Yeah, <laughs> in a very long time. Um, it's just a name, you know, that I see in the in my day to day job is oh Cold Chamber, you know, <laughs> just. <laughs> Disassociate one my, completely. One of my favorite things about Coal Chamber is the Psycho Stick parody of uh, Mi Loco, but instead of oh, Mi Loco, yeah. it's, it's Mi Queso. <laughs> <laughs> Psycho Stick is so good. So, in our first installment of Band Fights, Riley has won two points to one and a half. Good job, Riley. Uh, Yay. We needed a lot of hints, but we to needed be fair, a lot of hints. The music genre is the music is very broad. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. This is I figured we give just testing the waters with that one. That That's was so, fun. I liked it. That was fun though. Yeah. Chatter, did you just steal something? <laughs> oh, it's a bottle cap. Okay, he's fine. <laughs> bottle caps are 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 game. Yeah, he's he's one years old, so he's very Everything is his, and he wants to play with it and explore everything. And the door popped open, so now both the dog and the cat are in here. I was trying to keep them, but... It's, it's okay. It, it gives the show production value. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. it, 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 my dog. I mean, cause, because, you know, if, if someone wanted to turn the video off, they, they'd feel like they were spurning the dog, and they can't do that. Exactly. Now they have to watch because of the dog. Yes. <laughs> the dog somewhere. She'll be so sad if you stop watching her. Look at her. <laughs> Corinne, we know that's a lie. That dog is never sad. <laughs> hey, she's sad when we leave the house. She has okay, separation that's, okay. anxiety. <laughs> that's, good point. Other than that, she's not sad. <laughs> so I've been, uh, to switch up subjects, I've been listening to a band called Bloody Hammers. Uh, they've been around since... I want to say 2012, 2013, maybe 2014. Uh, they kind of have a a Rob Zombie kind of like in terms of stage presence, like a Rob Zombie kind of vibe. But they're definitely a bit more. The riffs are definitely a bit more doom metal, and their vocals are kind of uh, well, doom metal and sometimes punk. Uh, and they sound like a combination of. Uh, the Misfits and Ghost. Ooh. That's an interesting sound. Yeah. And, uh, you know, mostly all clean vocals uh, and lots of creative riffs and very horror movie or horror genre centric, hence the Rob Zombie comparison. Uh, and they're they're quite good. Do I do recommend. <laughs> and that was Bloody Hammers? Yes. Uh, da David got me into them. Uh, and I was like, this shit rocks. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, David. There's um, a new Ghost EP, isn't there? A big covers EP? Yeah, they have they have one of those between every album, I feel like. But, you know, I haven't listened to it yet. I don't think it's quite out yet, but I know. Oh, I, okay, okay. I saw of it. Yeah, they may have released a song from it. I, I, I cannot speak to this legally. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I know that it's coming. That much yeah. I can say. Yeah, it, it, it is coming out. Um, it is. Uh, I mean, I really, I can. I, I think it's been announced. Um, 
Yeah, it has. Um, because it's selling. Uh, it's called um, Phantomime. Um, mm. is the new uh, ghost release that's coming out. They have, I think, they released one song so far. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, that that is a thing that's happening. I enjoy or it. Corinne with the industry insider, <laughs> there. insider approach. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I it it it's uh, ship date is uh, May nineteenth. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Yeah, so that's the release date. We'll probably get the full album then. Um, <laughs> All right. Any I'm gonna, album I'm, releases you're looking forward to? I'd have to I'd have to look it up. Uh, because there, there are, I have a few, uh, uh, sleep token I'm interested in. Um, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up. E. Uh, this one's. E. How about you, Gabe? Do you have any, uh, I've albums you're looking forward to? Reordered a couple. Uh, the Foo Fighters record, that'll be interesting to see what happens after Taylor Hawkins, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be, I'm intrigued about that, too. Um, I know that, and I know that there is... I listen to a band called Swans, and they have an album coming out in June as well. Mm. Sure, there are others, as you say, these things. Yeah, there's, there's a few, there's a few uh, new cattle decapitation I'm looking forward to. Which is always a fun word to say around people that don't know about Mm -hmm. metal. Uh, You know, just because it's like, oh yeah, cattle decapitation. That that shit rocks. (laughs) Who doesn't love some cattle decapitation in the morning? (laughs) Who doesn't doesn't love their uh, environmentally conscious, vegan-friendly death metal bands? (laughs) Just like Carcass. Yeah, just like Carcass. (laughs) But yeah. No, that's that's what I'm looking forward to. I don't think I have any I'm really specifically looking forward to um, because I've been I've been listening to so much sad lesbian music. It's just like random shit on Spotify. <laughs> um, but also because like I work with music every day, um, like I know of so many releases mm-hmm. that oh, it's sure. it's kind of yeah, like yeah, it's overwhelming. Like I. If I looked into every single one that I come across every day, I would just, like, I would have no time in the day to do anything else. So, like, I kind of, in a way, I kind of zone music out. Um, Other than, like, I just, I put on my Spotify and it recommends me things. And I'm like, okay, sure, we'll listen to this. And I really like things or I hate it. And I'm like, no, never, never again. <laughs> um, But, yeah, because of that, I'm, I'm oddly, I'm weirdly on the pulse of music while completely ignoring it. And it's a weird place to be um <laughs> does it feel like work yeah it kind of feels like work um and you know i can still enjoy music it just can't have anything to do with my work but also like when it does have something to do with my work like i kind of just like when it comes out it comes out you know and then i'll listen to it you know because if i i'm i'm the one who's doing things with it before it comes out and i don't want to think about it outside of work <laughs> like you know the new ghost album <laughs> I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Although I have to say, it, it should be a smooth release, is all I'll say. And we shouldn't have any problems. Okay. <laughs> Unlike the last one. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait. Oh. Do you, you have tea, Corinne, that you're allowed I, to share? I, I, I did have tea. You, you don't, you don't oh. need tea. I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot. I, I, uh, no, no, no. I will just say... Um, it's it's been on the internet. The the ghost mazes that came out um with uh the last record. Mm-hmm. Biggest pain in the ass. Uh they massive, massive problems uh, across the board. Um that's all I'll say. And the mm-hmm. even the internet has said this. So, you know, it's not really like spilling the tea if I as long as I don't say anymore. But yeah, I'm just glad oh, this gotcha. release should be really easy. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't have any problems with this release um is what i'll say i foresee no extra work for me having to be done because of this release thank you ghost <laughs> it's always good yeah it's a good one yeah <laughs> those goddamn mazes <laughs> uh 
Um, I'm going to switch back to video games, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, So another game I've been playing lately has been Dredge, which is the... yes! Which is the... uh, the uh, fishing game that's also nice. kind of the Cthulhu yeah. Eldritch God horror game. Uh, I mean, it's I wouldn't call it a horror game, but it has horror horror elements. Um, I've been but, wanting to get Dredge. It looks so good. It is so my aesthetic. I love shit like that. I mean, it's it's a very interesting game. It's overall pretty good. <laughs> it's, like um, it's not without <laughs> problems, but um you know i'm probably gonna do impressions or in the in the future but um i think the the you know upgrading your ship and like how the you know the early game kind of uh slowly introduces you to the mechanics and everything in its world is very rewarding um you know uh there's some things later on that you know the that are like some of the HUD I don't really like uh, some like there's some later on there's some things that like you have to remember like which specific type of fish this specific thing needs so you can progress the narrative and yeah the thing, and it doesn't and it's like when you catch that fish it doesn't tell you and my memory is pretty shit yeah um, I have a, mine as well <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very easily distracted and it's like uh, this is this is difficult because it's like I have to. It doesn't tell you what type of fish; it just shows you a shape. And it's like, <laughs> like this is this is this is my nightmare. Not not the dog barking. The dog barking is fine. Uh, scared we, we me. Un- we we understand we understand when dogs bark. Yes. Um, but uh, it's like I can't remember. I like it's like what fish is this? Is this a crab? I think it's a crab, but what type of crab? Oh. Is there something I remember reading about mutated fish? Yes, there's mutated fish. They're pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, I've watched a little bit of it be played, and it seems very cool. I like the idea. I can definitely see how it does get harder because um, there's a lot of different types of fish, and like the way the it works. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have a shit memory too, so you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So I think this is our last week without a Riot Fest lineup, if I had to guess. Yeah, I feel like, I kind of feel like next week uh, we're going to be talking about the Riot, like next week or then if the next few weeks we'll be talking about a Riot Fest lineup, which I'm I'm just glad it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do think it's after the whole fiasco. To put all of their eggs in the Douglas Park basket (laughs) instead of looking around a little. Maybe, Maybe they didn't know if there was anywhere else in the city to go. That's. I mean, they did get kicked out of Humboldt Park. That is fair. Yeah. Uh, whew, that that that's a whole fiasco. In and of I itself. remember the old days, the the mud pit. Uh, oh God, yes. The 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 mud pit year, or every year was really the mud pit year. But the <laughs> year before they got kicked out was I was that there. Was mud pit year. <laughs> yeah. That was the best, the worst, or the best mud pit year. I um, remember this, Riley? I came back to your college dorm. After the mud pit year, (laughs) it was, I saw Slayer and I came back from the mud pit year and you're like, what happened? Slayer happened. (laughs) Slayer did happen. I I felt so bad for the park after that year. I understand why they got kicked out like that. They got destroyed. Uh, It was, it was so bad. It was just so rainy and it, everything was a mud pit. Um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am, I am really excited for the Riot Fest lineup though. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of things that are lining up for fans I love that I'm like, I'm looking and seeing gaps and holes and schedules. I'm like, oh, this looks just right for this. Yeah. 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 Because we were we're planning on going to see, uh, Gabe and I are planning on going to see uh, Mastodon and Gojira. Mm -hmm. And and it's like they don't have an Illinois or a Chicago show. So it's kind of like. They could. They could. Lorna Shore, too, which would be cool. Lorna Shore, which would be cool, too. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's always because, like, if you are on Riot Fest, like, there's a certain, like, rule where, like, you can't have, like, another show. It's, like, 90 days, isn't it? Yeah, like, 90 days yeah. or something like that. So, like, whenever you see those suspicious gaps, it's, like, maybe, maybe, maybe they're just taking a break or maybe. 
like I saw the Mars Voltas playing in the Midwest and they conveniently skip Chicago and I'm like, mm, please. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, there's, that, there's definitely be a show. reason to skip Chicago exactly. in general, like unless there's a reason you're skipping Chicago, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just I almost think we pocket. pretty much have a confirmed Paramore. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I feel, I feel so confident about that because they skip Lala. I think that that would fit, you know. I'm not that big on Paramore. They're they're fun. They're cute, uh, and they, uh, you know, I I, I have nostalgia towards a few of their songs, but yeah, I feel like I, that's a ninety percent. I feel like yeah, I feel like that'd be a good that'd be a good fit. Yeah. Um, their most recent album, I I don't know. I found it kind of boring. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't listened to them in a long time. I just know that they're probably going to be there. Yeah. Um, they came out with their new album the same <clears throat> excuse me the same week as pierce the veil um and uh i i like pierce the veil's uh album better um i, I felt like it was better than paramore's new album but that's my personal opinion um i don't know i just i felt it was less boring than paramore's was um I'm not sure. That happens. Yeah. I think Paramore had like one or two songs where I was like, oh, these are pretty good. And then uh, the rest I was like, these kind of all sound the same. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's how I felt about Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> if Samantha's watching this, we're, we're sorry that we're slandering uh, Paramore. The, I'm sorry. They, they, uh, light slander. <laughs> it's a light slander. A light slander. With a, with a lower capital S. With a lower <laughs> case S. Not capital S. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a slander. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little quote, like a little yeah. uh, parenthesis. Yeah. Slander. <laughs> I, I do think, if I'm reading the rumors of dates, things, the Riot Festival is going to be investing back in the metal go- business again, if I'm reading things correctly. Sleep Token is very suspicious. With their they're, they're such an interesting band. Uh, just because... You, they're not really pigeonholed into one genre, mm-hmm. like because they have metal elements, but they also have kind of synthy elements and uh, c- pop, clearly pop influence, and it all somehow works together. And it's you know, I, I I'd be interested if they if they were on that'd be cool. Riot Fest, yeah. Mr. Bungle is another one that I think <laughs> will probably be there. I know, Mr. Bungle. I, I, lo- I love the name. I just always love the name, Mr. Bungle. <laughs> Anything Mike Patton. Anything Mike Patton is gold. There she goes again. <laughs> it's okay. We all understand. I'm 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 actually surprised my uh, my uh, yellow lab and golden retriever haven't gone off yet. Yeah, I have, uh, a, sleeping, I have a sleeping husky. Somehow we're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's pretty rare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now she's coming over. She, she came all the way in here to tell me about what she's barking about. I, I don't know what it is because I don't speak dog, but <laughs> <laughs> she she came all the way over to to make sure I knew. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It was probably just someone walking in front of our house. <laughs> as as Riley knows, um, our uh, our porch like goes right up to the sidewalk, so like there's really no space. So people Uh-oh. walk like right in front of our window, essentially, and she hates it. No one's allowed outside our property. No one is allowed to walk on that sidewalk. Um, how dare they consider existing outside of our house? <laughs> it's a crime. Of course. <laughs> I always joke that uh, my yellow, my yellow lab is kind of like a he's like the sweetest dog unless there's a kid walking across the street. <laughs> like if they're walking home from school, then it's. Then it's, you know, there's imminent danger to this household and to this family, and my dog cannot allow that. Mm. Uh, my dog scared Spider Man um, <laughs> <What>? this week. <laughs> so we got pizza on Friday, and a man in a Spider Man costume, like mask and everything, delivered it. <laughs> And I'm sure he said something, but I couldn't hear it over the barking of my dog, who was flipping out because Spider-Man was delivering our pizza. <laughs> and I don't, I wish I could have asked him why, but I did yell, thank you, Spider-Man, as he was leaving. <laughs> <laughs> 
that man gets such good tips. I can just see it. Yeah, I was like, what? I opened the door and it was (laughs) (laughs) Spider-Man. That's great. That's genius, though. Yeah, it it. is well done, especially in a college town. Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) On a Friday night in a college town, showing up as Spider-Man, like. Can you picture 420 deliveries as (laughs) Spider-Man? So good. Oh, maybe that's maybe that's when he hatched the plan. Um. <laughs> Genius, it really is. Yeah, yeah. I was very shocked to find Spider-Man delivering. <laughs> I thought he should be busier, you know, but mm-hmm. he's got to make that money. <laughs> he's got to make that money. Yeah, you know, protecting the town, it, it doesn't pay much. <laughs> I might, I think we might wrap it up. I have um, one thing I might want to try if oh. edit it out in case we don't like it. We can put it right at the end so you can just, just cleanly slice it. <laughs> I had an idea and it was funny in my head. If it's, We'll find out if it's funny to everyone else. So I was reading quotes um, and I decided quote against deciding who said something. So this idea was originally going to be Kids Clan. Who said this? Kid Rock or the Ku Klux Klan? <laughs> but I determined I didn't like researching that topic very much, so it's just going to be quote wars, and this one edition of it will be Kid Rock or the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. All right, here we go. All right. Um, so the first one, I can smell a pig from a mile away. <laughs> I'm going to go Kid Rock. That's correct. That one is Kid Rock. That's what I was leaning to. That's what I was leaning to. Okay. Question two. I have a shotgun named after me. I think that's also Kid Rock. So I'm sorry. I didn't mean No, no. I'm going to guess Ku Klux Klan. Yep. That one is a clan member. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, I was I'm I, a oh, clan ahead. member. I can see I can see I can see why this uh the confusion there. <laughs> I have a lot of gay friends and I will have a talk with them after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> um Kid Rock? Yes, this is Rock. <laughs> I, I don't have any context. <laughs> oh, was... Maybe Kid Rock just needed to learn the gay birds and bees. Um... Maybe. maybe. <laughs> I'd love to think that somebody was telling him. Yeah, and he's like, I'm going to ask them some questions. <laughs> I'm, it's not that I'm racist. I just only like me. <laughs> okay, that has to be Kid Rock. That is a clan member. Damn it! <laughs> this is this is hard. This is hard. <laughs> the final one, which is the greatest thing I've read this week. I like to take rubber ducks into the bath so I can sink them with my feet. Kid Rock? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Much more fun to play this game than it was to research, I assure you. I'm I'm confused and at- where are these who why <laughs> why are clan members talking about what they like to do in the bath it was asking I, I don't i don't have any reference for it other than that it was the funniest thing i read this week oh god oh my camera's even going wonky because of it come now camera come on that was kids clan <laughs> Oh, well, we've learned something today about we Kid Rock. Today. We, I mean, there's no winners of that game. No, Everybody no. for it. No, we've, we, we are worse. We, we've, you've tainted our minds and our souls. Oh, and good. And we thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. We salute you. So we put that on the end. If you can decide. <laughs> I think we're, I think we're going to keep that. At okay. first I was worried, but then I was amused. <laughs> I, I knew that you would be worried when I started. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think you could always do, um, you know, like a musical artist and then like some like controversial and or just awful group 
that and then part's the plan. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that would work because there's lots of shitty people on this earth that oh, yeah. and but also musical artists say some really fucking bizarre and shitty things too. So you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I think, I think Kid Rock things are either everyone loves him or he's done something so horrible that it isn't even really funny. So I had to skip those. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Kid Rock. I think what we deserved to get Kid Rock, but probably not good. No. Kid Rock, a man who is not a kid and who does not perform rock. And who claims to come from a blue collar rural upbringing and instead right. was raised in like a palatial mansion. This was the other thing I found out while looking into this. He yes. comes from a rich background. Yeah, he's he super does. fucking wealthy. Like in de- he was wealthy before Kid mm-hmm. Rock, like his, the photos of his house, it's like massive. Like the house he grew up in, it's so big. Like he, he's a, he's a charlatan, is what he is. <laughs> a fraudster. <laughs> Snake oil sales. My name is no, 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 sir, <laughs> no, sir. This is a Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> sir, this is a Denny's, and we're gonna have to ask you to leave. <laughs> See, now we can feel better because I am absolutely okay with slandering Kid Rock. Yes, if we're going to slander anyone, it should be Kid Rock. <laughs> and it's only slander if it's not true. Exactly, that's what made it fun. So, like, it's if it's all true, it's not slander. Exactly, it's, those it's, are real things you've said, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or real things the plan has said. So, you know. <laughs> also true. So, uh, oh. I think... Uh, on that note, we will we will end we will end this inaugural uh, episode of I don't even know what we're gonna call this show yet. Part of me, a part of me, a part of me will will probably call it like the weekly discussion. Yeah, but a part of me also wanted to name it Chuckle Fucks Anonymous. <laughs> but we're not anonymous. Our names are. But here. You can, yeah, but we, anonymous makes it sound cool. You can cool. call it Riley and Friends. Yeah. And it's like now it's like a morning talk show. <laughs> <laughs> you have naming rights, Riley. You can come up with whatever you want. Whatever okay. makes you happy, dear. It won't be Chuckle Fox Anonymous, even though I kind of enjoyed the idea of naming myself Chuckle Fuck Prime. <laughs> well, you can still be Chuckle Fuck Prime, no matter <laughs> what. <laughs> it doesn't need to... Like, yeah, these ideas are funny to you. Like when you're explaining to your wife why you have to do research on Kid Rock. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's worth it, I promise. <laughs> This was important. This was necessary. Uh, so, um, oh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to say, can I give myself a little plug? Yes. Absolutely. Plugs plugs are A-OK. All right. So uh, I've been Corinne McCrory. I will continue to be that. Um, no plans of changing. Um, but uh, if you enjoyed hearing me talk about that book earlier, um, you can check out Wham Bam Thank You Ma'am. Uh, it's a podcast that is going to be releasing on 5-3 um, with its very first episode. And uh, we're going to be a uh, every other week podcast where we talk about uh, and analyze romance novels of varying sorts while getting drunk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Just and uh, it. We're, we're talking about the spicy bits. We're talking about the tropes. We are reading smut on the internet um it's gonna be a really good time uh we have a discord if you want to join that just let me know um and uh yeah it's uh i'm really excited uh to get that first episode out um and i'll be recording the the second session later today um Mm, uh the the drink the drink with that book is eat the rich so um (laughs) what's the book you're doing with it uh, so the book was the one I talked about earlier, oh, which nice. was Heartbreak nice. Incorporated. Uh, the very first book for the first episode, though, that comes out in 5.3, um, is Dragon Queens by Kathleen de Plume. Uh, it is a fantasy novel um, uh, about a prophecy and about a knight in shining armor rescuing a princess. But that knight in shining, shining armor is actually a bounty hunter and a lady. And that princess is actually like a really sound and savvy like diplomat and it breaks a lot of tropes, twists a lot of tropes. It's really fun. There's a lot of fucking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of course, classic. Yes, um, it's good. I recommend it. Uh, I say I give it four out of five stars. Um, 
I say I give Park Break Incorporated like five out of five stars. I love it. I just love that author, though, so maybe I'm biased. It's um, okay. Yeah, so first episode comes out in 5.3. It's Dragon Queens by Kathleen DePlume. Uh, the second episode will also be Dragon Queens because we went over and talked way too long. Um, and then the third episode will be Heartbreak Incorporated. So, uh, yeah, that's the thing that's happening. Nice. Riley, do you have a plug sign-off? Oh, I mean, this is going to be on my YouTube channel, so I don't really... I mean, I'm, uh, come watch my videos, but you, you're already here watching, watching the this video. <laughs> so uh, did it. Keep doing it. <laughs> good job. Uh, do you have anything, Gaben? Mm, uh, yes, I would like to plug the fight between my husky and the squirrel in the yard. It's been pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> it's an ongoing battle. It's uh, never going to stop. Yes. Is, is, it, is it a Cold War of sorts? Yep, very high up in the tree and spinning circles around underneath. <laughs> you you can find updates on this yep. developing situation um, anywhere you can find Gabe. <laughs> yes, you, find Shido, you can find the next one. There'll be updates. I'm sure it will continue. <laughs> All right, I guess uh, on that note, we'll sign off. Uh, so we'll see you guys later. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.